Okay, so welcome back. This is part three in our series where we help you to understand your laptop computer and how it works down on the motherboard level and all the different components and circuits. What do they actually do? And the goal here is to help you, for example, if you want to work on or repair laptop computers, it's really important you understand exactly what's going on. Uh, unlike so many videos on YouTube where people say, take out your meter and measure this, measure this, measure this, without really understanding what's going on, and often they don't understand what's going on under the hood, the goal here and on this channel is to actually teach you what's happening and why, so that you can figure out how to do your own measurements and not have to rely on others. So what we did in the previous videos is we started talking about the power system that feeds power to your motherboard and it comes from either an AC adapter plugged into the wall that converts your uh, AC sine wave of around 120 volts here in the US to a 19 volt DC that feeds the power to your motherboard or the battery included in your laptop that feeds something like 12 volt to the same components. So what we talked about in the last video was the circuit you see here. And this is a circuit that's copied over and over on your motherboard. And it allows you to take, for example, the 19 volts coming from the wall adapter or the 12 volts from the battery and step that voltage down to the DC voltage required by the components of your motherboard. And we talked in the previous video, you know, the CPU generally requires around a volt or two. Same with the GPU. Different components have different requirements for voltage and few of them actually use the 19 volts or 12 volts coming from external power supplies. So we talked about this simple circuit and we showed how we've got a couple MOSFETs, switching MOSFETs that have their gates controlled by an integrated circuit that switches them on and off and it generates a PWM signal that is then filtered by an LC filter an inductor and a capacitor, and it converts that 19 volts or 12 volts or whatever into your 3 volts or your 1 volt or 5 volts, whatever. So what we're going to talk about in this video is an extremely important aspect of this and helps you really understand what's going on under the hood. And that is before you actually take the components and take them to your bench and power them up and measure them, it's really nice to be able to simulate the circuit on your computer so you don't have to worry about, you know, causing short circuits and, or not knowing what's going on. You can simulate on your computer the circuits and you can do simulated measurements of voltages and currents and powers. You can change values and see what happens. A great learning experience if you can simulate your circuit on your computer and we're going to use a free piece of software I've talked about before called LT Spice. And um, I've done a, like a 15 part series from beginner to expert on LT Spice. Really, really important aspect of learning electronics allows you to simulate all kinds of electronic circuits and get a, a deep understanding of what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this simple circuit and we are going to bring it into LT Spice and simulate it and allow us to change values, to measure values, to measure currents and voltages as if we're measuring them on a scope or with a multimeter. And that will allow us to move forward with really understanding when we have an actual motherboard on the bench, you know, how we're going to test it and what are we going to measure and what are we going to expect. So here is LT Spice. And what I've done is I have imported a circuit that you see here and this is basically the circuit we've been talking about. Um, it's a little bit more complicated. There's more stuff to it. But here in yellow is the controller that controls the switching signals sent to the gate of the MOSFETs. Here I've got this called Q1, which is the top or first MOSFET. I've got the second MOSFET. I've got the output inductor. I've got a current sensing resistor. And then I've got our capacitors and the load. And we've shown this before. This is the basic circuit you just saw. Here is 19 volt source that is feeding this. And all of these other components we'll talk about later, but they're uh, helping this integrated circuit to do its job. But the core components are the 19 volts, the two MOSFETs, the output inductor, and the capacitor on the output. So we're going to show you how to get this circuit, import it, and then run it 
and do some measurements here to prepare us for doing actual bench testing. So again, this is LT SPICE. LT stands for Linear Technologies, which is now Analog Devices. And what we have here is a demo circuit using an LT or Linear Technologies version of this DC controller circuit, which may not be exactly what you've got, but at least it's something that does uh, what we expect and it will help us to understand. So how do we get this? Well, here I am on the Analog Devices, the company that bought Linear Technologies, which developed LT Spice, and I am in analog.com, and I am in the resource library, design tools and calculators, LT Spice, LT Demo Circuits. And what I did is I searched for a high voltage step down converter, and I came up with the LTC 3891 Demo Circuit. Um, you can look for others, but I just chose this LTC 3891 high voltage step down converter goes from uh, we can have an input voltage from the power adapter from four and a half to 60 volts, converts it to 12 volts at 15 amps. Again, you can change these when you get the circuit. In my case, I changed this to 3.3 volts. We'll show you how you can do that. But here's the circuit. And all you do is you download the LT spy simulation and load it. I show you how to do that in my series. And then here is the result of what you get. Now, the other thing you're going to want is the data sheet for this LTC 3891. And the reason is because you're going to have to be familiar with some of these other components that are hooked up to it. Specifically, over here, we've got two resistors in a voltage divider. You can see it's sensing the output voltage in a voltage divider and feeding the center tap to the VFB, which is the feedback input. And this is used for us to tell this switching controller what voltage we want to maintain at the output. And we find this out by going to the data sheet for this device. It tells us what values this need, these resistors need to be in order to tell this, hey, in our case, I want to maintain 3.3 volts at this output independent of what this input voltage. If I'm using a 19 volt AC adapter, if I'm using a 12 volt battery, uh, it doesn't matter as long as I choose these resistor values to a value that tells it, hey, maintain whatever this voltage input is, maintain 3.3 volts on this output. If we look at the data sheet, it will explain to us how we can choose those resistors to tell it that. We've also got some sense plus and minus to do current sensing, as we talked about in the previous video. 8 milliohm resistor, it's just sensing current. We've got the bottom gate output that gives the signal to the bottom or second MOSFET gate. We've got the top gate, which gives the similar signal to the first or top MOSFET. So here is the LTC 3891 data sheet. You can find that very easily on the Analog Devices website. And here, if we scroll down to page 18, here is where it says setting output voltage. And the V out that we want, in our case, 3.3, is 0.8 times 1 plus RB over RA. And RB is the top resistor and RA is the bottom resistor. So all we have to do is take 357 over 113 add 1 and times 0.8 and that will give us 3.3 and again you can just just by modifying the relative values of those resistors you can go 5 volts you can go 12 volts you can do whatever you want so really important that you uh, have this information but now that we've got this we've got 19 volts coming in we've got 3.3 volts coming out we can run this and we can start poking around, seeing what the gate signals would look like, seeing what the currents through the inductor would look like. We talked about in the previous video how this helps to slow down the pulses coming in for the current, and uh, we can look at the voltages on the output and so on. So what I'm going to do, I've got this all set to go. The only changes I made were these resistor values to give us 3.3, and I'm going to run this and now I have a plot, in this case, of this V inductor on the input of the inductor. And this is the 
waveform that we expect to get on the input of this inductor. Again, we showed in the previous video how you're switching this 19 volts, and here's a peak of 19 volts. And this controller, we've told it we want 3.3 volts on the output, so it has automatically determined what pulse width we need on this input. In other words, how it's going to switch the gates of these MOSFETs in order to get 3.3 volts on the output. So here's the input to the inductor. So we should expect on the output 3.3 volts. So here is the output. And you can see down here in blue, here's 2, here's 4, and it's about 3.3. So I'm going to get rid of this inductor. And I am going to zoom in on this output voltage. And you can see here is 3.3. And it's going up to about 3.34 and down to about 3.32. It's got about 10 millivolts of ripple from 3.32 to 3.34. So it's not exactly 3.3, but with the combination of the inductor and the capacitor has filtered this out. I can set this as a minimum of zero and a maximum of say 3.5. And you can see it's fairly flat DC of about 3.3 volts. Um, we can also look at, for example, the current through the inductor. And you can see the current through the inductor is a peak up to about 6.3 amps and down to a minimum of 3.9 amps. And you can see, as we said before, the inductor serves to, you know, the input pulse is a vertical rise in voltage but this slows it down a bit. It takes some time, and when the voltage goes away, it slowly decays. So that's the purpose of the inductor, to slow down the change in the current through the inductor, and then the capacitor slows down the voltage to give us our flat voltage. So one thing we talked about is we can now say, hey, I've already told it I want 3.3 volts, so Let's say I change my input voltage from a DC supply of 19 volts to, say, 40 volts. All right? You probably won't do this, but just to show you, we've already told this controller I want 3.3 volts out. So no matter what this input is going to be, as long as it's within the acceptable range of this controller, it should still give us 3.3 volts out. So I'm going to rerun this. And here is the V out, and you can see... Again, it's 3.318 up to 3.339. So even that I've changed this to 40 volts input, it's still giving me about 3.3 volts on the output, solely because I chose these resistors. So this is a wonderful way to understand what's going on with your DC controller. But also, it explains why there are other components on the board near this controller and the MOSFETs and the inductor and the capacitor. Um, there's probably a resistor for current sensing. There's probably other resistors for feedback to, to, to tell the controller what voltage you want to maintain. There's protective stuff. There's a bunch of other components that you'll see on the motherboard. And this helps you to understand what that is, and you can especially look at the data sheet for this LTC3891, and you can see it's got typical application, it's got all of the values, it's got the different pinouts. So wonderful way to really understand what's going on in your circuit and what this controller has to do. Explains the shutdown and startup, some of the protective controls on this, so there's a lot more to it, but at least you have a good understanding of the basic circuit itself and how it operates and how you can get more information. Now, another really important aspect of this simulation step in understanding how these circuits work is being able to run a simulation to simulate, for example, the protective functions inside these DC controller circuits because there's quite a few features that you probably are not aware of. If you're going to be poking around on a live motherboard, it's good to understand how the controllers are going to react if there's a short circuit or if there's an overvoltage. And the good thing about the simulation with, for example, LT Spice is you can kind of simulate those things to see what would happen under different conditions. 
So in the LTC 3891 data sheet, um, in the applications information, for example, it talks about fault conditions, current limit, and current foldback, and explains how the controller responds in, to help limit load current when the output is shorted to ground. So it does some internal calculations. It's really good to understand and maybe even simulate in LT Spice. And then there's also over voltage protection called Crowbar, designed to blow a system input fuse when the output voltage of the regulator rises much higher than nominal levels. So it's a really great opportunity to spend some time with the simulator and simulate some of the features so that you can understand the controllers and how they work. And that will help a lot when you are doing measurements on your motherboard or you're trying to figure out what's wrong with your motherboard, why it's not working. Maybe there's some protective circuitry going into service that you probably weren't aware of. So that's it for this one. In the next video, we're going to talk about what can be one of the most challenging aspects of working on a motherboard and trying to understand what are the components and how are they configured. We're going to talk about how to get resources, how to identify components, and how to do some reverse engineering. A lot of times the components you'll see on especially older motherboards are not really available to the public, the data sheets, the schematics. So you're going to have to do some detective work to try and find out, you know, can I get a similar component and see how that works? Because it's really important you understand how to get the data so you know what you're working on and you're not uh, confused. So that's it for this one. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.